Hi, are you there? Are you there, there yet? So we're about to start our webinar. I'm hoping that you're all going to be logging on and flooding us with your um, with your appearances. So I just want to introduce a few people to you before we start for real. So Sarah. So this is Sarah. Sarah's going to be helping me in the kitchen today. Sarah helps me a lot. Um, she's kind of my right hand girl. Uh, we've also, you can't see her, but she's very attractive, is um, Brie. And Brie will be at, uh, sending through questions to me and Brie will also be telling me how many people are logged on. Um, so how are we going, Brie? Any? 173. 173. There's 173 of you. 181. 181. No, no. It's awesome. Okay, so um, you're from all over the world, which is really exciting. I had an email from someone who was getting up at the crack of dawn from the Netherlands. So hi, Nicolene, if you're there. Um, also um, all over the world, like Canada and, you know, just everywhere. So it's actually pretty exciting. Um, so how are we going, Brie? 186. 186. Okay. Yeah. So can everyone hear us? Okay? Oh yes. Yeah. So can everybody hear hear me? You can't tell me that, but you know, just just type something through into the group. The other thing you need to know is if you haven't downloaded the recipes, or if you haven't already seen the recipes that came through to you this morning, um, there is a link that'll pop up on your screen now, I believe, and you'll be able to download the recipes um, straight away so that you can have them in front of you um, as we're talking and going through the recipes. If you've got questions, please ask questions. If you think that the questions might be good for everybody, then save them to the end, maybe get a piece of paper and a pen, save the questions for the end, and then we'll have a little bit of a Q&A at the end of the, the session. Um, first up, uh, we've got a very special recipe that we're releasing at the end that you don't have a copy of, sorry. But we'll send it out to you later. We're going to send out all the links and all the recipes again later to you. Um, and we also are going to have an offer that's exclusive to the webinar um, through our shopping cart as well at the end. And last but not least, we've got something very, very exciting also at the end. So you've got to hang in there with me. Hopefully, you know, I'm a bit more entertaining than watching paint dry and you'll want to stay for the whole 45 minutes to an hour. Um, okay, let's get going, shall we? How are we going, Bree? How many have we got? 196. 196, okay. 198. 198, yay. Okay, so I hope you can all hear me. Oh, just to let you know that if I'm blurry, that's a good thing because I look better blurry, but it could be your internet connection as opposed to what we're streaming for you so um, maybe walk around in the house I, I don't know you know try and get a better picture but you you will get the link emailed to you which will be a nice clean version of this whole event so yay this is our first one so be nice to me okay because I'm a little bit nervous okay let's go all right so the recipe that you don't have right at the get-go is the cinnamon uh, sorry the coconut eggnog peppermint coconut eggnog um, it is in the America's Mix one book no, two book, page 18, if you have those in front of you. Um, and I've already pre-made the custard. So basically an eggnog, we thought we'd get a bit festive right at the, get, at the beginning. Um, I've pre-made the custard part of this recipe and then I'm just going to add in the coconut cream. So I'm just going to pour this in. It's got to be cold, obviously. Um, unless you're, you know, Northern Hemisphere, then you might like to have it hot. Um, it's got my favourite vanilla in it, Kalela vanilla. And... The, the cream has been in the fridge for quite some time. So the, the fat part of the cream will go into, uh, so, sorry, rise to the top, and that's what you end up with um, when you do that. Um, so it's quite solid, yeah? And I'm just going to pour the whole thing in. Normally I will keep the liquid, the clear liquid that it's at, that's at the bottom of the tin and use it for something else. So there was no cow's milk whatsoever for this eggnog. Um, there is eggs in it, though, of course. Would it be eggnog? Probably not. Okay, without them. And I'm putting in some doTERRA uh, peppermint oil, just a few drops. So it depends on your peppermint oil, um, which oil you have as to how much you'll use. And you only put it in at the end because it's quite volatile and you want it to have that really strong taste. So just oh, four or five drops. Depends on, you know, you don't want to drink toothpaste, right? So, and then we're just going to blend it up. Oops, so that's pretty sweet. Just going to blend it for a few seconds on speed four. Okay. I'm cranking it. So if you wanted to do 
this with normal cream and normal milk, you could do that as well. And what I would do is whip the cream first and then fold it through, and that's really moussey and fluffy. Um, I've got a little festive glasses here. So you can put the, the candy cane in as a decoration. You could do, you know, a bit of a margarita feel and, and put some egg white around the base, uh, around the top of your glass and crush some candy canes and decorate the glasses like that. I ain't got time for that shiz. <laughs> okay, here we go. And then Sarah and I can be drinking this to your health throughout the class. So there we go, thanks. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you. Very peppermint-y. Actually, pour some out for these guys. Sorry, just got to taste it. It's the test, right? Thumbs up. Beautiful. It's very creamy and delicious. Okay. Little wipe. So we're going to get straight into the jalapeno cheese torta. This is a recipe from number one. This mix one, and it is on page nine. So the cheese there, yeah. So first up, I'm just going to mill the cheese that we're putting into the bread, um, throughout the bread and on top of the bread, and just a few seconds on quite high speed. Oh, thanks. <laughs> here when it's done so it will depend a little bit the recipe is written but it will depend a little bit on the kind of cheese that you end up using so here we go it doesn't matter if you have some left in the bowl that's fine what i'm going to do is warm up the yeast with the water and um, i'm using fresh yeast i forgot to show you so i'm using fresh yeast you can use dry yeast so whenever i've got 30 grams of fresh yeast in the recipe you can use two teaspoons of active dry yeast in replacement okay um, the perfect thing about thermomix is that you can um, use the heat to activate the yeast so look you know it's really hot here in Perth today but I'm sure in the Netherlands it's pretty cold um, so just to activate your yeast you can warm it up to two minutes on 37 and with the water and or whatever the liquid is that you're using so we'll just pour that in I'm also putting in a little bit of sugar in this mixture and I think I'm putting in Evu, a little bit of Evu. So Evu is extra virgin olive oil if you've been watching my videos at all. I'm carefully measuring that just to help the dough be a little bit softer and more pliable. Okay and we're warming that for two minutes on speed two. So that will also with the Thermomix 5 especially, this, the heat doesn't get to 37 in that time, which is fine, on speed 2. So, while we're doing that, we're going to show you some, we're going to show you the prosciutto wrapped cheese ball. So that is on, in book 2, on page 33. Are there any questions, Brie? Everyone, happy days? Um, so someone far? wanted to know if we're going to add brandy to the by all means, knock yourself out. Brandy, rum, whatever you want to the egg milk. And that's when you do it, actually, was that that point that I added the peppermint, that's when you would add in your alcohol of choice, okay? One for the bowl, two for you. One for the bowl, two for you. Okay, so I'm going to do wrap up this, this uh, cheese ball. We already pre-made it for obvious reasons. Um, I've got these really cute little cast iron pans. So this makes it really easy for serving later. Um, I need some rosemary actually. Um, so you could get these individual little pans and use them and then actually serve the cheese ball because we're going to roast it or bake it. Um, and I've got prosciutto here. Now I did say in the recipe to do a big star layer, but to be honest, if you can get it already cut like this, I just need a board actually. Um, if you can already get it laid out like this, it's probably a little bit easier, but this is quite thick. So get it shaved is my recommendation, and we're going to make little ones anyway. So put them on the path. Or you could use a big one and have just an individual one. That's, that's also fine. Okay. And then the cheese mixture's here. So... You can kind of, you could get gloves if you wanted to. Just kind of make a little round that's going to fit into whatever your pan is that you 
used, a pan of choice, and then you're just going to wrap it essentially. So it's easier if you make sure it's fully covered because you don't, when you bake it, you don't want to end up with having all the um, cheese oozing out everywhere if you can you know, resist that. I'm going to put a little bit of cake on there. We'll get back to this in a second, actually. And you know what? Oh, yeah, there we go. We're going to put that in there like that, and this will cook down and get quite um, toasty and delicious. A little bit of rosemary on the top, just for the heck of it. How cute are they? Are they gorgeous? Okay, I'm coming back to that in a minute. Raise my hand. So meanwhile, back at the bread. So we have nice um, warm yeast, so it's ready to go. Yeast needs to be at about 21 degrees Celsius before it starts to be activated. So I'm adding in the flour. I'm using Lauki flour. I know this is not available worldwide, but in Australia, this flour is excellent. This is the tip OO, which is a high protein flour. You can use a baker's flour as well. Um, and the reason I use Lauki is because it has a field to shelf. Um, provenance they can tell you where it came from and it goes to the mill and it's all non-GMO so this is a 500 gram bag so that's what I need today so that goes here. and then we're going to need this oh, a bit of salt sorry have you ever made bread without salt yeah funny weird taste okay so I'm using pink salt flakes pink salt flakes have less saltiness per pinch and I'm not kidding it's not a joke okay if you use another salt, you'll need to cut back on all of my measurements. If I've recommended pink salt flakes in anything um, and you're using another pink salt, salt that has a finer grind, you need to cut back and taste and adjust the recipe accordingly if you can't, cannot access the pink salt flakes. Okay, so now we're going to knead this for three minutes. So this is um, quite a long time for Thermomix, but luckily I'm making little cheese balls, so we're all good. So three minutes. Then we're going to leave it in the bowl um, for about 10 minutes. And the reason we're doing that is just so that this is a closed environment and that will just start the yeast process. And in fact, today we're in kind of a hurry for obvious reasons. So we're going to go straight ahead and form the dough into our, our pull apart loaf the minute we've finished the kneading process. Um, okay, off we go. Oh, did I do the six minutes, six seconds? Was I supposed to bring that together? Yes, I was. Hang on. If you're following along, you're right. I got it wrong. Stop. Stop. Okay. I'm supposed to bring it together for six seconds. All right. There we go. On speed six. And that's just to get all the dry happening before you need. Okay, now we'll need. Oh, it's the side switch plates going. There we go. Okay, so back to our little cheese ball. We'll do another one. And then I've also got the big pan here. So you can see if you're wanting to serve the cheese ball um, on a table and everybody help themselves, you can get one of these pans. You don't have to have one of these pans. And in the recipe, I've recommended preheating it. And the reason for that is, is you just want to heat the cheese and cook the prosciutto as fast as you can. You don't want to have a total liquid cheese mess. So it's not all bad, but it's just hard to serve out of something like this. So I'm going to make just another one just to show you because we've got time. And I actually think that a fresher prosciutto from the deli is probably preferable to what I'm doing here. So are there any questions, Brie? How are we going? Is everyone still keeping up? Yeah, yeah. You missed the beginning, but... Oh, okay. Um, sorry. Yeah. Everyone's okay? Any latecomers? Sorry, <laughs> nothing to say, you missed, you missed all the exciting stuff. No, you didn't. You missed nothing. Nothing except the egg noise. Okay, so I'm just going to make another one of those, wrap it up again, same process. And just try and cover it up as much as you can, the cheese itself. Because if you've got any gaps, like I said, that's where it'll all be ooze out, like that, for example. So I'm just going to put another one across the the other way, like that, just so that I don't have that problem. And look, you know, what's not to love about bacon and cheese? It's pretty decadent. 
and it really does help if you do have a little pan. But if you've got little ramekins or something else other than these, they will work as well. And perhaps on a slightly lower heat, it um, will be helpful because you don't want to um, Okay, I think we're going to just do that many today and put them in the oven. Great. So we might just put those in now because the bread's going to be ready to go soon. Is everyone keeping up with me? We all good, Brie? Everyone's yeah. happy? You're understanding me. Can you understand my Australian accent? Yes? All good? Right, so we're going to make, in a minute, when this is resting, while this is resting um, in the bowl, we're going to make a sugar and spice mix up. So this is just a, like a little idea for a present. Um, so now we, we can see that, yeah? You've got your beautiful bread dough, so we're going to leave it in here. And this is the only rise it's going to get. So that's a nice warm bowl. And that's going to stay there. Everyone still see the yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so this, we've already pre-made a little batch of it here. And this is just a cute little present, I think. Um, but also fantastic in the recipes that we recommend that you use it in. It's great in your tea or coffee or your Creo brew. Um, it's sort of a nice little fragrance kind of chai sugar if you like so um, we're going to make up a batch of that now so what I have here is some crystallized ginger um, I've got a half of a nutmeg um, nutmeg makes you sleepy so don't use the whole one don't be tempted half a cinnamon stick I've got some ground ginger I've got colored peppercorns but if you didn't have those you could just use any peppercorns you have I've got half half a vanilla bean um, and this is quite a dry vanilla bean, so I kind of let, I do keep some dry vanilla beans or, you know, let them dry out a little bit and use them that way because this will mill up quite finely and be easy to go throughout the sugar. This is a Tonka bean. These aren't easy to get, but Wayne and Pei in Western Australia have them and they'll probably mail them to you, actually, you know, for the price of a stamp, pretty little. Um, I'm only, I'm going to use the whole one today because I'm, you know, but you can use just half as the recipe states. Um, this is kind of, they say it's a cross between vanilla and cinnamon. Don't quite get that reference. To me, it just smells beautiful and tonka beanish. Um, and then we've got our ground ginger and our cardamom seeds as well. So they're all going in there. And then I've got an orange here and my other friend in the kitchen, the microplane, and we're just going to put in the orange zest. So the microplane is the, the brand to get. They last forever. They can zest your all zests, ginger, uh, garlic if you wanted to, parmesan, nutmeg, fresh nutmeg you can grind directly onto something with this. And you can see how easily that works. And it's just fragrant and very fine. I don't like using the thermomix to zest, so peeling off the zest and then putting it in here and blitzing it. I just think you, it has too, too much room for error, essentially. Okay. So we're just going to blend this up, I think. Did I tell you this is in book one, page 33? I don't think I did. Okay, so we're just going to blend it for five seconds on speed nine just to bring it together. And then what I have here is the sugar that we're adding in. You can see this is a beautiful dark sugar with lots and lots of molasses still left in it. So this is called... Muscovado sugar. I use the Billington's brand because I love it. It has fantastic um, provenance as well. It's it's from Mauritius and they don't um, do anything to it. It's very unprocessed. So when you're purchasing a dark brown sugar, uh, generally speaking, I'm not going to name names, but generally speaking, they've sucked all the molasses out of it and then um, put molasses back into white sugar to create brown sugar. But that is not the case with the Billington sugars. And they're all beautiful sugars. I use golden pasta sugar. I use the light muscovado, the dark muscovado. And they also have a Billington, uh, sorry, a molasses sugar. So that's going in. And we're just going to combine that into the mixture that we've made, the beautiful fragrant mixture. I wish this was 
smell vision. That's really beautiful. You'd love the smell. And we're just going to add this for 10 seconds on 310. <laughs> And then you just put it into the jars or you keep it somewhere and use it for whenever you need sugar. It would make an ama amazing um, spiced custard. It would be fantastic. Okay, we've got a question about what's candied ginger. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so does... Okay, who asked that one? Where are you? Where'd you live? I'm coming to tell you. Uh, Geraldine. Geraldine, Geraldine wants to know what candy ginger is. So it's glacé ginger. You can buy it in the fruit section of your supermarket. And especially at this time of year, there'll be lots of it available. Um, and it looks like little sugared candy, actually. Um, so, yeah, just go and have a look in your supermarket in the fruit section. And I think some men do one. Um, I think a lot of um, brands do that. And it's quite available at Christmas time. Okay. Can we show Tom the meeting as well at the end? Or sometimes people are yeah, to see show. a Tom thing. Oh yeah. Do you need up. to see a Tom Mean up close? Yeah. Okay. I will do that. It actually looks like a little group poo. <laughs> a very tiny one. For the non-Australians in the room, that's a kangaroo. <laughs> okay, can you see that? Yeah, good. So it's sort of like a, a really hard raisin. Um, but it's a top of them, okay? You can leave that out of the recipe if you need to, if it's not the end of the world, but it is very fragrant and beautiful. So, you know, if you can source it, that would be great. And like I said, Wayne came with Australia. If you're in Australia, they will mail you one of these very kindly of them to do that. It's a bit of a fiddle, but they'll do it. While you're there, ask them for other fun stuff because they've got it all. Okay. Um, so we've got our sugar. So now this is when you put it into your little jars of choice and then, you know, wrap them as you want or put it somewhere for later when you're using it. Okay. Any more questions? Are we, ha are we going okay? Yeah, good. Okay. Awesome. All right. So we are going to get back to our bread. So our bread has not really rested, you know, the, the full 10 minutes potentially. But you can already see that it's risen and you've got a bit more going on there. So we know our, our yeast has been activated. So now I'm going to need it for two minutes, I think. Is that right? I think it's two minutes. We're going to go with two. You know, we're winging it here. So two minutes again on another knead function. Uh, and the reason we're doing that is just to, to start it up again. And then at the end, I will start forming the, the bread. So I have here my bread mat. Isn't it? I hope you can all hear me. Um, so I've got my bread mat here. So this bread mat is available in my store. If you haven't got a bread mat, it's a really great idea to have one in the kitchen. Um, I use them for all sorts of things. They can go into the oven as well. They're great for chocolate or candy making. Um, and you'll see in a minute that it's, you know, it makes it easy to work with anything sticky. Um, I also use my little trusty spatulas. These are also available in the store at the moment. Um, they're coming to an end. I'm not going to have many left soon, and they're, going, they're getting hard to source. So um, get in there and get your, your spatula. Um, and I use this as well rather than touching the dough with my hands. But I am going to dust the bread mat with some more flour um, because you need it to not stick, okay? So just do that. And you can be quite generous, but not don't go crazy because you don't want to end up adding more flour to the bread and creating a different texture. Okay. So we've got 45 seconds to go. Chat amongst yourselves for a minute. Write a picture. Okay, I only have a few people from Australia. Austria! I can't read. We have someone from Austria. We have a few people from Austria. How exciting! I wish I knew how to say welcome in Austrian, but I don't. I can say welcome on, but that's about it. That's, that's my German for you. Welcome. That's so exciting. Hey, tell us where you're from. That would be fun. Why don't you just tell us? Type in where you're from. That would be good to know. Um, I was going to get something. What was I going to get? Oh, the, the tray. 
And the jalapenos. Yep. All right, so now we're going to form our dough. Now normally you'd let this prove. You'd wrap it in the bread mat and you'd let it prove. <laughs> Suddenly everyone's talking to me. That's good. Awesome. Okay, so I'm pulling this out. Oh. And see. Oh, awesome. Going everywhere. Yikes. Okay. It's quite sticky, which is good. It's okay. And it's very warm. Sorry to rub it in Austria, but it's really hot here. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Up to speed 10 just to flick off the dough. I hope you know that trick. Then you've got to wait three seconds while the pole open. Okay. So where's everyone from, Bree? Tell us. Everyone in Singapore, Canberra, Alice Springs. Cool. Radelaide. Radelaide. Yay. Go Radelaide. Is that Sue? There's so many Sues in my life. A lot of them are from Radelaide. Okay. That's exciting. Have fun. Okay. So get the dough and then kind of push it into your round like this. And if you've got flour, on the on the bread mat then it will be helpful to you but if you don't you can use this and scrape it like that so we want to get it into a nice round because this is how we're going to form the pull apart bread so this will be easier to watch than for me to write and i have tried to write it uh i did tell you this is in book one page nine yeah okay then we're going to roll it and you want and it would be easier to work with once it's proven, to be honest. So this is going to be, you know, a rush version. And I'm sure you can cope with that because you're from all over the place. And you figured out how to get on here. That's pretty clever. It's awesome. <laughs> okay, so keep rolling it. Get it into a circle. And you need it to be quite a large circle. Okay, there we go. Whoops. And then we're going to kind of pre-cut it. Now, you need to, if you're using a bread mat, you need to make sure that you don't use a knife on the bread mat because you will cut your bread mat. Stretch it out. And then you're just going to kind of pre-cut it so that you it's easier to find later. So like a pizza, but quite skinny little um, pieces, okay? Can everyone see that? I'm not sure. Can you, everyone see what I'm doing? So just cut like like you're cutting a pizza, but not all the way through because um, you will have to redo it anyway once you've put the toppings on. So, um, and quite narrow. So at the, at the wide end, we're talking about, you know, I don't know, 10 centimetres for the metric amongst us. Okay. So then we're going to put about half the cheese on. Half the cheese mixture, just spread it all over. And, you know, be quite generous with that. And then we're going to put on our jalapenos. So these, these are pickled jalapenos. If you don't like them, if you don't want the heat, they are quite delicious though. Give them a whirl once. Um, if you don't like them, go less. Um, or you could use pimento. So pickled pimento or some red capsicum or something similar like that just to give a bit of a, a punch of flavor okay so you can see now they're all over the place but what you want to do is make sure you get at least one into every roll so i've lined the base of a spring form tin here with the baking paper the bread will just pop away from that when we open it up so it should be fine um, you don't really need to do anything to the to the walls but this is just to get it off easily more easily for us um, so now you go back through with your spatula and cut the original wedge. And then starting at the wide end, um, pull it out. Hang on, make sure it's all the way through. I might just use my... No, it's not there. A palette knife would work also very well for this. So pull it out sort of a little bit wider, roll it up, kind of try and contain the filling. 
And this is how you roll across on as well. And then pull that over. And then we're going to put that that way up into the bread tin. Okay. Any questions about that? You're understanding that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Thumbs up? You can give us a thumbs up. That would be nice. <laughs> and then if you have a Sarah in the kitchen, you get her to finish this. You go, come on. And then you make sure you use all that cheese. Okay. The better your cuts are, you know, as in the more equal, the prettier your loaf will be. Okay. All right. All right, let's get Sarah onto this. And we'll get this in the oven. It takes about 15 minutes. I would fully form this and then let it rise again. That would be my preference. But we, we don't have time. Um, so we're just going to rush through and bake it so that you can see it baked. Okay, moving over here. Yeah. Can you push it open? Okay. Oh, no. Tidy up. Every kitchen should have a Thermomix and every kitchen should have a Sarah. <laughs> I don't know how to sell her in the store though. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm just gonna mm -hmm. do this. Right, so I just want to show you the prosciutto um, cheese balls because they have been baked. So, oh yeah, great nice. So at this point, you know, we've got a little bit of dried up rosemary on the top. You might want to take that off and put fresh, fresh rosemary on. Um, and just get a cracker or some of your full apart loaf. And really, to be honest, you need more than a cheese knife because you've got this bacon to get through a prosciutto. Can you see that? So cut in there. I'm not going to eat it because I'm making this. I'd love to right now, though. It smells amazing. So you can see what happens, okay? So if you were serving one of these as a little appetizer, it would be really cute, wouldn't it? Don't you think? Look at that. You see that? I'm hoping you can. And then just ladle it on. Go for it. Maybe you need a little knife with each serving as well. The guys over here are, like, drooling, and I'm not passing it over. They just have to wait until later. Okay. Oh, ouch. All right. So now we're going to do the salad. So I know Australians like to have salad at Christmas time because of our heat. So sorry, Austria and Netherlands, um, we're doing a salad. But it's a fantastic salad any time of year. It's sort of a, a main meal salad as well. Um, we so we've pre-done everything up to the point of doing the salad dressing. So I'm going to quickly make the salad dressing and then we'll assemble the salad. Um, Sarah, maybe the chocolate needs to start, yeah? Okay, so salad dressing is the easiest thing to do in a thermomix. The ratios are a third oil, a third, uh, so a, thir a third fats, a third acid, and a third other additions in there. So if you're not making your own salad dressings, I'm really cross if you take the thermomix back immediately, okay? So I'm going to throw everything in together. I've pre-zested the two oranges and two lemons. And this, just to let you know, or one lemon maybe, uh, this is on... This is in number two book on page 16, okay? So that's all going in. So this is the easy part about salad dressings. You literally throw everything in and it's all good. We've got a chilli here. It's a big one and we've kept the seeds in. We're going large. We've got some garlic. We've got some fresh herbs, which is coriander and mint, given that this is the new salad dressing. Um, and we've got our juices here. I'm going to put in fish sauce. And you can use any if you, any kind of fish sauce. If you're vegetarian and you're going to leave the chicken out of this salad, just replace the fish sauce with something like soy or tamari. I'm going to carefully measure it. That's how I measure. <laughs> you need a lot. Actually, to prevent the heat from being too hot, you actually have to have balance in something that's spicy. So you're balancing it with salt, you're balancing it with sugar, and we're balancing it with with acid as well. So I've got the a dash of rice wine vinegar here. So this is also acidic, of course. That was a dash, don't you think? I think so. Ooh, ouch. And then we I am going to weigh the sugar because I can't I tend to go back from the sugar and I don't put enough in. Um, and you do need 40 grams I think for this much mixture. Okay. So just 
There we go. 55. Oops. Oh, well. Okay. Uh, what else? Oh, the Evu. So this is Evu, extra virgin olive oil. Here we go. This is from Cobham Estate, which is a beautiful Australian award-winning brand. They're measuring that. And we need 100 grams of this, and that's to balance out the dressing ratio so it's not liquid and watery. And then we're going to blend this for 30 seconds on speed 10, I believe. This chap, okay, it's got the horrible spout, you see. It takes a, oh my goodness, it takes a long time. Okay, any questions? How are we going? Nothing pressing? Nothing pressing. Good. Bree's handling the questions I trust. 235 people. Oh, wow. That's so cool. I'm so awesome. It's just so awesome that you guys did this and that you managed to find the links. Oh, the problems we had with links. We apologise. We'll get it a lot better next time for you. Okay, so now we're just going to blend that. I'm pretty sure that's everything. So speak 10, 30 seconds. I can't be heard. That could be a good thing. So just go with me on this, okay? I'm just going to measure it as well. There we go. Someone says the recipe in the book doesn't have sugar in the dressing. In the dressing recipe? Okay, I'm going to have to check that. I apologise. I don't know. It should have 40 grams of coconut palm sugar in it or palm sugar. It might be written as coconut sugar. It could be written as palm sugar. I'm not sure. It does need sugar. Otherwise, it's too bitey. But if you are on a no-sugar diet, leave it out. Put something else in, you know, that's a sweetener. You could put raisins in and blitz it like that and you'd get enough sweetness out of it. Okay, so earlier on, we steamed the quinoa with the chicken over the top and then we've soaked that with a little bit of dressing that we had pre-made. So you don't have to pre-make it. We just did it for the sake of the, the, the web, webinar. Um, so that's kind of got beautiful flavour throughout it. We're just going to put that on there. You can put it all on or we're just going to make it look pretty today because otherwise, you know, it won't look very nice. So I've got Rocket here and also just some greens of choice. You can put, you can have any greens you like. Perhaps not iceberg lettuce. I, I would say anything but iceberg lettuce. Okay. And then we've steamed chicken thigh. So this is boneless, skinless thigh and it's been steamed in the Varoma as well above the quinoa. Um, and it doesn't take very long. You don't really want to um, have it on there too long because it gets can get tough. Thigh is better than breast for that reason. It doesn't get as far. Yeah. yeah. Confirm sugar is in the book. Oh, sugar is in the book. Oh, okay, phew. Sharon, back to the book or get a new one. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Right. So all the chicken. And if, like I said, if you want to leave this out, quinoa is a fantastic grain. It's high protein. So if you want to leave the chicken out and make this a purely vegetarian salad, you can do that. Leave the fish sauce out and leave the, um, the chicken off the salad. We're putting on mango and strawberries. Fresh. Fresh mango and strawberries. Just beautiful. And, you know, I, I have to say that a lot of people don't like fruit in salads. Just give it a whirl. You'll find that it's actually amazing. That dressing pulls it all together. And again, this is sweetness, I suppose, that adds to the, you know, put, pulling the flavour together. And then we'll just put those in there. Here we go. Strawberries everywhere. And avocado. So you can you can amp this salad up. There's a lot of dressing. So you could actually go, we're only doing about half of the recommended amounts. Um, so you can actually go really, you know, huge on this salad and you've still got heaps of dressing to go with it you can add more quinoa more chicken and this is a fantastic thing to use for um, a plate when you've got to go somewhere at christmas time a function some kind we've got 
spring onions that have been sliced on the angle, not chopped and thermo, and a few fresh mint leaves um, out of my garden. And last but not least, salted roasted macadamias. So for a bit of crunch, how good does that look? Are you hungry? Ready for lunch? Yeah, it's afternoon tea. Right? Sorry, take a pick. Oh, that's right. I've got to take a pick. I was told Instagram I'm going to be doing this, so I'm just going to take a photo. And I'll put it later. I'll put it up later on Instagram. I hope you're following me on Instagram because if you're not, get over there now. Cooking with Tanita. Do a search and you'll find me. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll photograph this as well. Sorry. The things we do, hey? But how fun is it? And it's all live. Yes. If someone has a quinoa allergy, would you recommend that? There's any other grain. So actually in the recipe it's written to have um, all like all sorts of grains. You could use couscous, you could use wheat, you could use uh, farro, you could use, I can't remember what else we put in there, rice, you could use rice. So any kind of grain is good in this salad and it helps bulk up the salad and make it a bit more um, filling as a main meal if you were going to do it as a manual. So now I've got the dressing. I'm not going to pour it fully on here because it'll flood it because you can see there's quite a lot of dressing. So just kind of drizzle that over when you're ready to serve it and then perhaps have some more on the side um, as a, you know, as a suggestion. So if you're going to take this somewhere, don't put any dressing on it at all. Just add the dressing when you arrive and when, when it's ready to be served. How do you like that? Yum. This does taste really good. Sorry, I can't share it. I really am. Go make it today. Go make it. Okay, we're going to put that there. Okay. And I'm going to put this into something. All right. So I hope you're all keeping up. Is everyone keeping up? Feeling good about that? I hope you're still wearing that secret recipe that we have got coming. And guess what? No, it's not quite ready. Okay. Can I do it now or not? Yeah, I think I'm going to. We're waiting on that chocolate, right? Yes. So, the secret recipe of the day. <laughs> the secret recipe is coconut stuffed dates. And it's out of Community Vegetarian. And right now, it's in stock. It's not in stock, actually, I lied. It's pre order. But we're letting you guys pre order. So, if you cross over to the store soon, you'll see it and you'll be able to purchase or pre order. The convenient vegetarian. So this recipe is out of convenient vegetarian. So they are coconut stuffed dates, and you can see I've got a box here. Fantastic present, just delicious. Little box that I got from enjoydarkchocolate.com, which I thought was so cute. So I've put my dates into a box there. Oh, they need to go in the fridge because it's very warm here. But you can see you can have you can make a beautiful gift with these chocolates. Um, so I've got them in little cups here. I've got these um, paper patty cases in Singapore. So go to Singapore. You're lucky. You can do this. Get them from Holland Village. Um, and so I've coated them in chocolate and then there's Creo Brew on some, there's coconut on some and there's salt on others. So we've got, you know, a few choices of how you want to do it. I'm just going to quickly show you how to DC the date and stuff it. So I've pre-made this mixture. So this is the coconut mixture. Just be warned that when you buy a coconut, a shredded coconut, they're not all equal. Um, you need to buy an organic version. This is this is from organics.com.au and you can order online. Um, and none of the fat has been taken out of it. It's shredded coconut. Um, when you purchase sometimes in a supermarket, you'll find that the fat was removed and then something else was put in to keep it moist. And so it won't, the recipe doesn't work without the um, the good organic shredded coconut. So, okay, let me just cut the date. So, just to de-seed your date. So, you get medjool dates or the fresh dates. If you're in Dubai, is anyone in Dubai? Hello, Dubai, are you there? Um, I have a lot of people in Dubai that follow me. Um, so, cut the date through, remove the pit, and then basically you, you're replacing it with the coconut mixture that we haven't made in front of you, but it's just blending up with some sugar and some salt, some halala vanilla bean paste, and maple syrup, I think. So it's very simple, pure maple syrup. Push that into the date. If you have wet hands, it's a little bit easier. 
and then we're going to dip them in chocolate. So the chocolate at the moment is probably melted, isn't it, Sarah? So just pull that out. So I, I do the chocolate for 15 minutes because then it will get a nice crack on it when you bite into it. Um, and it's just easy, you just dip it, okay? So the old I prepared some earlier trick. You can get something called a, a dipping fork. And I might just... So you need to scrape your chocolate out into something that you can dip in. And this has got, this is pure, you know, 56% dark chocolate with some um, coconut oil added to it. You can get a dipping fork from like a chocolate shop. Uh, I should say, save a school in melbourne.com.au. Go, go online. I really, really um, would like to get one. So if you want to send me one, save a school, all good. Okay, so put that in there into the chocolate. Just sort of turn it over. Now the chocolate is really nicely melted. And then pull it out. I'm going to have to make a mess. And then just sort of tap on the top of the melted chocolate with the fork. So the fork only has two prongs, a proper dipping fork. And I just tap until that's kind of drained off. Then I'm going to put salt on this one. Making a mess probably. Um, and just while it's still uh, melted, just a little bit of a few salt flakes on top. And I'm telling you, salt is my favourite. The salt, the salted ones are just divine. So that's a bit of a tip for you. So these are like salted caramel coconut dates. They're just you can't imagine that something so simple could taste this good. So there we go. We'll just tap on the chocolate again. And you can leave the coconut oil out. It does make it a little bit easier to work with um, in terms of getting a nice glossy finish. But you don't have to have that in there. Oops. Okay. Bit of salt. It's okay. I'll eat it. Not you. It's okay. It's all good. Okay. And then they can go in the fridge pretty well straight away. And you can see I made a mess. So it's probably better not to put them straight into the cases. It's better to do that after they've set. Any questions about that one? We're now going to dip something else. So so we've done pan fort truffles here. Actually, this is going to be really quite messy. <laughs> Oh, no bowls. Can I get a little, like, a shallow bowls? Okay, so this is the Pan Fort Truffle Ice Cream, uh, which is, I haven't got it written down what page it's on, but it's in the, I think it's in the second book. I'm not sure. Um, so you freeze it in a tray, cut it into squares, and then using, like, just some gloves if you feel like it, like the throwaway gloves, um, you kind of cut it up and then roll it. Oh, see, this is very soft. So ideally, you would have this be quite hard by the time you um, are ready to dip it. So it needs to be really, really solid and hard. So we're going to just go for it and wish me luck because it's going into hot chocolate. And then that goes like that. You literally got to use your hand. And then that's setting straight away, you can see. Then we just dust it off with a little bit of um, cocoa, okay? And when that goes back in the freezer, it'll be fine. So we, we won't do those now, but you get the idea. Oh, it's kind of messy, but good in such a good way. If these are solid, if these are frozen really hard for like 24 hours in advance, um, this will be quite simple to do and they will actually look very impressive. And once you dust them with cocoa, and once you taste them, to be honest, who cares, right? Going in, going in hard. Okay. <laughs> All right, I think we're done. So we've got 10 minutes of bread. Yeah, 10 minutes of bread, so maybe the time to take questions now. Yes. Yeah? yes. Okay. So while we are waiting on our bread to come out of the oven, um, I'm good to go on lots and lots of questions. Just need to wipe this up because I can't cope. <laughs> okay. So, Brie, fire questions to me. <laughs> Nothing yet. Nothing yet? No questions. Come on, guys. Throw the questions up. 
What does that mean? Yes, it's in the book, Geraldine. The recipe is in, we didn't decide which book did we? The date one? Yeah, uh, no, the date one is in the Convenient Vegetarian. So the, the coconut stuffed dates is in the Convenient Vegetarian book. The, the pan fort truffles, I think, is in book two. We're not sure. It could be book one because we've changed all the recipes around. Um, okay. Natalie, thanks. It does sound yum. Bass and Dean, it's 39 degrees. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I think it's about that here too. It's really, really hot. Uh, page 27, book one. Thanks, Sharon. We've got it. Oh, someone said, Vera said book two, page 27. Okay, get it straight, people. Which book is it? You don't know, I'm never going to know. It's in book one. Pan Fort Truffles? Yeah. Yeah, book one, page 27. Okay. Uh, do the dates have to be stored in the fridge? Once they've been, well, in our weather, yes. So once they've been dipped in chocolate, I suggest you store them in the fridge because it's just too hot. And especially with the coconut oil in the chocolate as well, it'll melt. Um, I want the chocolate meringue recipe. Sorry, Kathy. No can do. <laughs> Cheeky. Um, what are the names of the books? The books are the Merry Christmas Mix 1 and 2. So this is them here. I think I'm only backwards though. So Merry Christmas Mix 1 and Merry Christmas Mix 2. And there's about 40 recipes in each and they've all got beautiful photography and yummy recipes and for Christmas. And the bundle is the best deal. And, in fact, if you only logged on to the class and paid for the class, you kind of, you know, it's a bummer. You've got a free ticket if you bought the bundle, but never mind. Next year you know. Okay. My book is one page 27 is lavender and almond shortbread, but I've had it for ages. Yeah, no, ring. It, it is page two. Uh, sorry, book two. Book two. Quaid, I want a Thermomix, Mum. Send me one. Cheeky. That's my son. Okay. <laughs> Pouring with rain in Coffs Harbour and it's storming. It's a great way to spin a wet arvo. Thank you. I'm glad that you're enjoying that, Christine. Um, okay. Bundled. I oh, bundled. Linda, I know you did. And we had lots of trouble getting you on here, didn't we? Geraldine again because now I'm famous. <laughs> Geraldine. Geraldine, Geraldine. Say Geraldine. Okay. Um, bundle ticket here. Such an awesome value. Thank you, Tracy. I don't know which Tracy you are. Storming in Bruce Vegas. I know that's Ian Barron. Um, it would be good to watch a replay. Okay, you're going to get a replay. You'll have access for it. It'll be. It'll take a while um, for it to come through to your email, but you will get a replay and you'll be able to watch it for three days. Is that right? Oh, unlimited. Unlimited. So you'll be able to watch it. You can watch me any time of the night or day. <laughs> How fun for you. Okay. Um, Narelle, loving it. So good. Yay. Can you buy the, per the cast iron pans in Perth? Yes, Kelly. Those little pans are available from Kitchen Warehouse. Any of the Kitchen Warehouse stores have them. Um, Narelle, thanks to Nina. Narissa, thank you, Narissa. Don't go away just yet, guys. Um, I bought two bundles and also a seat. I didn't realise that the seat came with the bundle. So you snooze and you pay too much. Sorry. Oops, I'll give you a refund. Um, who's watching this again today and making it all? I don't know. Who is? <laughs> Can I come and eat all the food? Alyssa, get yourself over here. There's so much food. Um, Tanina, I hope you're going to do this again. Yes. Would you like me to do it again? I need lots of thumbs up if you want me to do this again because I think this was actually very scary, but we did it. We got here in the end. Yes, thumbs up. I'm going to make my husband make it all. He does all the cooking. Yay, Sue's husband. Um our bread is proving by the pool as we speak. Yeah, good idea. I'm about to prove by the pool as well, just as soon as I'm out of here. Actually, we're going to move the discussion across to Facebook. So if you're not on my Facebook page already, you need to go and join the Facebook page. You probably are. So when we finish with the bread oh, and we yes. show you that, it smells amazing. It's too bad you can't smell it. It just smells incredible. Um, okay, yes, please. And Cass is on the East Coast. I can't read it all. Um, um, stop, stop, thumbs up. Oh, good. Okay, definitely yes. That's great. Good. I'm glad that you've had fun. I hope it wasn't too kind of bitsy. It's a little bit interesting talking to myself. I'm very good at talking to myself. You might have seen some of my videos. So I do talk to myself, you know, periodically. Um, so I'm quite good at that. Thanks, Veronica. To Nina, when are you coming to Sydney? Hold that thought. I might be coming around the country with the convenient vegetarian classes. So, you know. Stay, stay excited. Made, made black roll, black rice roll today. Go, Valerie. That is a great recipe out of the calendar. Oh, that's what I forgot. Okay, so if you go into my store today, um, I think it's going to come through in a, loop, a, a, a link to you. There is a, a, a discount voucher. If you spend $100 on the, in the store on anything at all, um, you will get a free calendar. But you have to enter the code 
C A L one hundred. Oh, it's in the chat box. Okay, so you've got to add the the code into the store, otherwise it doesn't take it out of stock, and we forget to send it, and then I get an email and a phone call. So make you'll get a free calendar. So if you've already purchased a calendar, you just get an extra one, and it's a great present. It's very pretty, and it's got lots and lots of fantastic recipes in it as well. Um, okay, um, where is the Sienna cake? Deborah, good question. So I pre-made the Sienna cakes. Um, and this one has been dusted with icing sugar and this one hasn't. We were going to do the Sienna cake originally, but it was just, we ran out of time. So this is a beautiful sticky um, fruit cake with chocolate, can't go wrong. Um, and I bake them in these little paper cases because it's easier as gifts. So when you wrap these up in cellophane and lots of ribbon, they just are amazing present. And people will be like, are you making that for me again next year? Because they just love it. It's just such a beautiful gift. So you dust them with icing sugar do your Austrian snow right there and then um, wrap them up, okay? So um, I might just open this and cut it so you can see just what you're missing out on. It's a beautiful recipe. Um, okay. And it's just like, it's sort of like sticky toffee fudge. It's gluten-free. Can you see that? Um, what am I doing? Where do you get those boxes from? Okay, the box. These boxes are from. <laughs> these boxes are from Way and Pay, but you can get them in kitchenware stores. Kitchen, uh, like house, house had them. Um, I've got a, a star one here that I did just, and then I kind of use them as part of my decorations at Christmas time. I make a lot and wrap them all up and have it all beautiful on my kitchen bench. And it's kind of part of, part of, um, part of my Christmas decorations. Okay, more questions. Uh, $100 for a free calendar. Yes, then go. You've already got one. Um, but you can go buy the veg book. You can go order the veg book. I've also put a trilogy product in store. So if you wanted a brand new set of all of my three cookbooks, I've put that in store and I'm going to personalize each of them for you. So that's in there as well. Ian, stop complaining. <laughs> uh, yes, you can probably get cake boxes from somewhere like Spotlight, I think. Um, Maria would like me to come to Cairns. Okay. <laughs> Have you got a nice house I can stay in? Um, how long will the Sienna cake last? You can pre-make these now and they'll be fine for Christmas. Um, and you could actually make them way in advance because they've got a lot of sugar in them and a lot, well, a lot of sweet stuff in them and, you know, they will preserve really, really well. Joyce, what's the difference between the Merry Christmas original book one and the book one released last year? Oh, so the new Merry Christmas versus last year's. So Merry Christmas one came out in 2012, I think, originally. So we took some recipes out, we replaced it with some new stuff and we did all new photographs. And then Merry Christmas two came out last year and we did the same thing. We took a lot of recipes out that were, um, you know, for one reason or another, a bit too healthy for Christmas. Let's say that, shall we? Um, and then we put them into, and then we put a whole lot of new ones in. I just wanted to sort of vamp it up and freshen it up. So next year we'll do Merry Christmas 3, potentially. Unless I'm, you know, travelling the world doing cooking classes. I don't know. What do you want? Merry Christmas 1 or cooking classes? Merry Christmas 3 or Christmas classes? Uh, is doTERRA the only essential oils you can use in cooking? No, you can use other essential oils. The doTERRA ones are really, really strong, um, so you need a lot less of them, and the flavours are quite remarkable. So if you want to know about that, I think we're going to send you through a link. You can go, I, I sell the peppermint oil in my store, but it's on order, so uh, based on, you know, as the order comes in, I will then order it for you. Um, and also the wild orange oil as well, which I love as well. There's a few oils in my store, so go and have a look there. Which book is the Sienna Cake in? Um, I think it's in the first one. I think it's in number one, but I could be wrong. I've been researching everything I read, and it says we should not be using essential oils for cooking. You know what? If you're putting three drops in a great in a liter of, um, uh, you know, coconut peppermint eggnog, it's it's better than having something that's got preservatives in it. That's that's my take on that one. Uh, book one, page thirty-eight. Jenny, is that the Sienna cake? I think so. How do you get the calendar? The link Cal 100 isn't working. Oh, it's capital C-A-L, sorry, capital C-A-L. There you go. Um, okay. Okay, there's our bread. So if you had um, if you had a nice ribbon to put around this, look how good that looks. Isn't that awesome? And then you just pull it apart. So and this is without proving. 
So if you were going through this, you know, and like pass the butter. I like a bit of bread with my butter. <laughs> Let that melt. You can see the little jalapeno there. This is just divine. And actually, if you end up not eating at all, I don't know why that would happen, but if you end up not eating at all, you can slice it really nicely and it will toast beautifully. It's just a beautiful, beautiful recipe and I'm sure you're going to love it. I think we are done. We've done one hour. So if you liked this and you want me to do it again, please go and talk about it on Facebook. I'm going to post a few photos on Instagram um, in a minute about what we've done. And so go follow me on there. Go find Cooking with Tanina on Instagram and, you, and you'll follow me. And then I'm going to be on the Facebook group right now and I will respond to your questions. We'll put up, did we put up a banner? We did do a banner. We were going to put up, I'll just do one little um, post and then all the questions need to go into that one post, okay? So um, come across. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, global people, wherever you are. And thank you, Australia. And thank you very much for being part of this first event that we've done. And yay, let's do it again, shall we? How fun was it? Yay, thank you. And thanks to everybody who helped me because it's been a journey. Anyway, see you next time. Merry Christmas. Bye.